Hello YouTube. This is um, this is an outdoor video, of course. Uh, um, I'm at East Lawn uh, visiting the resting place of my grandparents. I don't know how good this is going to come out because I got a very busy street right next door to me. But uh, I just came here to pay respects to my grandparents to their memory. Because I, I have to accept that they're long gone. They don't, you know, they don't really exist anymore except in my memories. But I did go to, you know, I'm at their final resting place. And <clears throat> I don't know. I came, I came all the way out here to take pictures and, you know, to see it again. And to maybe do a video and... Well, I can't think of a damn thing to say now. I don't know what good anything I have to say will do, since... <clears throat> it's not like I could tell it to them. Um, I love my grandparents. And I miss them. And... It's just too bad that we had... We had religion get in the way of our of our affection for one another. And it did. It really did. It, um, it's a source of a lot of pain. You know, my grandfather today would probably be very happy that with uh, Islam going, getting nuttier by the, by the day, that he was right about Ishmael and that little bit in, uh, in the book of Genesis uh, about Ishmael the troublemaker who's going to burn the world to a cinder and and then go to hell so that all the good Christian people will go to heaven. That's their job is to burn up the world. That's what he told me. Obviously I don't believe that. I think if we burn up the world we've just burned up the world and we're all gone. And uh, you know like they say in Proverbs uh, I mean this earth is our home. And anyone who disrupts their home, you know, and lays waste to it, they just inherit the whirlwind and its futility. Oh, I wanted to say something about my deconversion and my childhood, but it's just too hard. Uh, and I'm not used to talking into this camera. I'm used to talking into my computer and seeing a, a, a reversed image of myself. So I'm babbling. And I don't even know how long this video is going. Uh, I guess this is just going to be one of those pointless videos uh, that I need to make for some reason. Uh, I just wanted to show where my grandparents are. And I think I'd be better off doing my talking somewhere else. I, I just don't feel much like it talking now that I'm here. You know, did that, and there's so many people coming around. Uh, I mean, it's a Friday afternoon, and uh, this, I mean, I'm finally alone. <laughs> so, I mean, I can't be talking about my atheism and my views, and, uh, you know, it just doesn't feel quite right here. So, <coughs> I wrote a poem for my grandmother on the very day she died. I wanted to write something about her. And of course you can't talk about grandma without throwing Jesus into it. So I tried to, it's the closest I got to religious apologetics. And they, you know, when family members found out I'd written a poem about her, a very short one, on the very day of her death, I wrote it on, I was taking the light rail home trying not to cry in front of strangers. When I got the news, I left work early, you know, and I wrote the poem on the light rail train going home, and they made me read it in their meeting hall, which was the last time I've been there. And 
Naturally, an intervention was attempted on me. Another intervention to get me right with God. Because the, the ones who would talk to me are still scandalized by me and just can't believe I can't be fixed into what they are. I look at their version of being fixed is not repaired but neutered. I don't want to be neutered. <laughs> not like that. You know. <laughs> um, I read the poem and there was one line in there because it's as close as I can get without rolling my eyes. I wrote, if there really is a heaven, I have no doubt that's where you'll be. And I'm, I'm actually at the I'm at the pulpit where all the sermons were delivered as a child, you know, behind that big mural they have of uh, God's plan, and I'd love to get a picture of that for you guys sometime. I saw, I was watching the people, and it's hard because I get stage fright, you know, and I was having a tough time reading in front of people. But I looked around and my poem went over like a fart in church. People were saying, what does he mean by, if there really is a heaven? Oh, he's that atheist. He's the, uh, he's the apostate that we heard so much about. I had quite a few people just like, kind of walk up to me and do a, huh, and walk away. And one of my grandfather's friends tried to get me into a uh, conversation and asked me if I would uh, kneel and pray with him for the sake of my grandmother. And I told him, I said, do you really believe my grandmother needs us to pray over the destination of her spirit if it has anywhere to go? Didn't she think she was a good enough person already? What's with all this doubt? And I told him, I said, you know, Jesus told everyone to pray in private, not to do it as the hypocrites do, out in the open and on display just for everyone else to think you're wonderful. And then I begged off real quick and I got the heck out of there. My Uncle David was there. And he looked like a man ready he, at the at the starting line of a foot race. He looked like he was ready to sprint into that building as soon as he could. He couldn't wait to leave that place. He's He was damaged even worse than, than I was. And uh, he told me as I drove him home, as I drove him back to my uh, my grandparents' house after my grandmother's memorial service, uh, he looked, turned to me and says, I don't care who dies next, I will never go back there again. I felt the same way. And, um, I don't know, I'm just rambling. I, if, I'm going to have to do my talking about this later. I, the thoughts are just not coming. I'm sorry. So, now, well, thanks for putting up with this. I, I'll probably upload it anyway if it comes, comes out halfway decent. So, you know, peace everybody. And uh, I'll talk to you later. Goodbye.